uh, uh, admin offices all under new construction. Then all existing building will be under operation maintenance. So all uh, no other, like, you know, new construction, core and cell, schools, all can go for a OPM. And uh, commercial occupancies, institutional hotels, all can go for operation maintenance. Commercial interior, it is IDC, right? interior design and construct, uh, construction. This is for the tenant fit out tenant office, right? tenant spaces. So here you can uh, normally those core and shell certificate building that will go normally you have to, uh, you can go for a IDC. That means commercial interior certificate. Home, all lead home, follow BC, all the new residents up to eight floor. If you see eight floor and from nine floor onwards, it is considered a new construction until eight floor, it is a home. Even in home until three floor, it is called a multifamily low rise building. Four to eight floor, it is a mid rise building. It depends upon the uh, low rise, mid rise, family uh, build, you know, family type, multifamily, uh, and single family. They have a separate separate requirement. It is given. Then the neighborhood. Neighborhood means you know the township. So the the first developmental project neighborhoods whole, my uh, my fraction or multiple smaller projects, larger mixed use development all under neighborhood development. So it depends upon the. Then lead health care. Lead health care is all the inpatient uh, care facilities, licensed uh, patients, uh, care, outpatient, outpatient care facilities, long-term care facilities, medical offices, and the storage, chemical and pollutant storage, all will be under lead for health care. Okay. So these are the different rating system which will follow the reference guide. You may have a two or three questions from this. They will explain the project, what project it is. Then they may ask you, this is a, a lead new construction, lead home or a lead neighborhood. Ever. So two questions, sure. You may have a three also uh, to define which rating system. Why? Because who will uh, select the rate? Uh, my project is following under which rating system. It is the project team should select the rating system based on the explanation given in that you have to justify why you are calling it as a new construction, why you are calling it as a home. That way you have to justify, then you have to choose that when you submit the document accordingly. If there is a mixed use building, because sometimes you may have a mixed use, until five floor there will be a commercial, then after that there will be a residential. So if there is a mixed use of building, then you have to use 60-40 rule. Right. That means 60 percent is the building area follows under which uh, rating system you have to go for the that rating system. When more than one lead rating system applicable, the project team should decide independently which rating system to be used based on 40-60 rule. 60 percent of project building or space is appropriate to which system that has to be selected. Right. So if it is a mixed use type of uh, building, you have to use a 60-40 rule. Then 60 percentage of the building space followed a which type of rating system that has to be uh, go for uh, selecting that rating system that has to be justified in your document and submit. Multiple certification is for possible for core and shell. You can do the IDC or even new, new construction. Uh, you can go for operation maintenance. You no, know? So there are multiple certification also possible. So these are called lead rating system, right? So new construction, core and shell, home, retail, uh, neighborhood, interior, all are different re lead rating system. Now it's a structure. What is a lead rating system structure? The structure of our rating system, whether it is a new construction or a home or whatever the rating system, it consists of three main things, right? Minimum program requirement, pre-request credit. Minimum program requirement, I would say MPR, right? This is called eligibility. Which are the project is eligible to apply uh, the lead uh, certification? That's called a minimum program requirement. Once I'm eligible to apply that particular project, can be registered and, and uh, under uh, lead, then there are pre-requests. You have to follow by each category. You have to follow certain, you have to, you must meet that pre-request criteria. Then above the pre-request, if you do something better, that will be under credit. Right. So, in condition to achieve certification, you have to meet the minimum program requirement and the pre-requests of each category. Then you go with your and the uh, minimum credit for certification. Focus for maximize your credit points. 
what are the minimum program requirement why it is necessary right this is to provide guidance what type of project are eligible for lead certification and also to provide an enhanced project integrity to reduce the issues and challenges from any certification process what are the minimum program requirement must comply with all the respective country environmental law it should be a permanent building right? it should be a permanent building no caravan or mobile uh, mobile uh, shelter it is not uh, eligible must be a reasonable side boundary must comply with the F, minimum floor area requirement must comply with the minimum occupancy rates and then must come to share your building and energy water usage date must come uh, comply with your building area to site area ratio let's see the minimum eligible require eligibility that means minimum program requirement comply with the country environmental law zoning requirement new construction must comply with all the federal state local environmental laws the second thing yeah, must be a permanent building design construct and operate on a permanent location on already existing land. no moving is allowed that's a must be a permanent building Then the reasonable side boundary. You can see here that this is your side boundary and this is your uh, pro lead project boundary. So you have in your uh, site map, you have to define clearly what is your side boundary, what is your lead project boundary. It is good if you can have both are same. Side boundary and my lead project boundary is same. That is good. But some cases you may have a, a lead side boundary different and project boundary is different. Possible because you may have some other building that you don't want to do it early certification. Now you do it in the future. Right. So then you can really mark it separately. What is the uh, side boundary and which is your project boundary. Then justify the reason why you are not uh, your side boundary and the project boundaries are different. Right, that you have to submit that reason with the photographs and everything because they want to uh, check uh, whether is there any gerrymandering is done. That is called here gerrymandering. If it is there, it is not acceptable. They will reject your application. What is a gerrymandering? That means you omit or add some portion of land in order to gain the points or meet the uh, minimum program requirement. There are some reason you add, either you remove or you add some portion of land. That is called gerrymandering. The gerrymandering is not allowed. So when you submit your site boundary and project boundary, they will verify it whether is there any gerrymandering you did it. Right. If it is there is gerrymandering, that means without reason and uh, valid reason, you omit some portion of land or maybe there may be a, some pond will be there or sometimes there is a dump area will be there. So you just omit that land, then just focus on the other part of the land. No, that is not acceptable. So you should make it or the side boundary clear and it has to be meet all the basic things. Then you can reduce your project boundary. So that uh, uh, justification you have to submit. So that's a third minimum program requirement. So lead project must include all contiguous land in campus scenario, define a proper project boundary. Include any land for the purpose of undertaking lead project in the lead project boundary that is called uh, gerrymandering. Gerrymandering means increase and decrease the project land or area in order to earn MPR or more credit points. The gerrymandering is not allowed must comply with the minimum floor area fir right floor area requirement so must all these new construction core and shell school any type of project other than the commercial interior it must have at least 1000 square feet of grass floor area or two percentage of site area whichever is higher two percentage of site area or uh, 1000 square feet whichever is higher if it is a commercial interior Minimum you need a 250 square feet. This is your minimum floor area requirement. 1000 square feet or 2 percentage of your site area, whichever is higher. For commercial interior, it is a 250 square feet of grass floor area. Then the occupancy rate. Right? Occupancy rate generally have one FTE they call, right? Whatever the new, um, uh, whatever the uh, either project wise, the new construction or core and shell or school, everything, it should serve for one FTE. FTE means full time equivalent. And full time equivalent means eight hour per day. That's called a one FTE. For one person, it's a eight FTE. Full time equivalent. Eight hour per day means it's a one FTE, right? So it's not 8 FTE. 8 hours per day is a 1 FTE. 
so at least it should serve the building uh, the, the project it should serve for one fte that's a um, minimum occupancy rate but this occupancy rate um, the requirement will be for operation maintenance right in that operation maintenance you should have a 12 month the, the building should be in operation for 12 month and then during the 12 month it should serve the uh, 60 percentage of the capacity it should serve uh, the it should be in operation right so that's uh, then only you can go for a existing building uh, or operation maintenance certification so that's all for your um, uh, no you have um, uh, so far we see environmental law should be a permanent building then you have a gerrymandering uh, the define your site boundary and project boundary clearly the gerrymandering is not allowed gerrymandering is adding uh, removing or adding some portion of land not to gain the uh, mpr or credit or pre request that is not acceptable then you define your site area right? minimum floor area requirement is a thousand square feet or two percentage of the site area whichever is higher for commercial interior means it must be at least 250 square feet then you go with your um, uh, minimum um, occupancy rate generally is for existing building it should be uh, you know, an operation for 12 uh, 12 months uh, prior to the certification and then it should be in uh, operating six, for 60 percentage of capacity to serve the current occupants then all other projects you should serve at least one fte one fte means eight hour one person eight hour per day so in this rating system i said about two to three questions same way you have a uh, this um what you call about the minimum program requirement right? that also will have a one question so they give us some scenario whether this project is eligible to go for a uh, certification or they may tell you if there is a project if there is a, some uh, toxic land or dump area is there so then they omit that land is it acceptable what is this called you know that kind of question and then the minimum floor area normally uh, that thousand square feet for other project 250 square feet for commercial interior so that kind of questions also possible so uh, me uh, what do you call about this mpr you will have uh, like two questions maximum two questions so then, so I have a minimum program eligibility is there, then we go for a system, right? Anatomy of the system, you should each category. There are seven categories we saw, we will see that also. Pre-request and credit. Lead rating system, 100 is your basic credit, six is your innovation credit, four is regional priority credit. Then innovation, six points, and RPC, four points, then total 10, 110 points. And 100 is a base credit. So you should go for a base credit out of 100. You should choose 40 to 49 is certified, 50 to 59 silver, 60 to 79 is a gold, 80 percentage is a platinum. So the innovation credit and regional priority, even innovation credit, you can include it. But the four point regional priority credit, it is called a bonus point. That means you should at least, first you should have it your, from the base credit only, 40 to 49 points, the certificate level you should have uh, completed. So then the innovation and regional priority, you can use it to upgrade your certification level. Right? For that, you can use it. For home, you have a 125 base credit, right? 11 point for your innovation credit. So you'll have a generally in this question, uh, certified level, silver level, gold, platinum, that type of question is possible. Point. Then the categories. There are eight categories, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. Location and transportation, sustainable site, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, material resource, indoor environmental quality, innovation and design, and regional priority. These are eight categories. Under each category, there are pre-requests. That means you have to meet, you must meet. This, uh, as I told you, the water efficiency, the uh, one of the prerequisites is 20 percentage indoor water saving. So you must meet 20 percentage water saving. Right? If you are doing more than, if you are saving more than 20 percentage indoor water, then you will get a credit. Every 5 percentage save from your 20 percentage, like when 25 means you have one, you will get one point. 30 means you will get a two point. 35 means three point. 40 means four points, 45 means five points, right? Then above each five percentage um, saving, you'll have additional one point that will be under credit. That's called a pre-request and credit. 
So what we are going to see from um, uh, the next class onwards, we are going to see each category, location, transportation, sustainable site. You know, that way we go with the, what are the prerequisites, what are the strategy to um, uh, meet that prerequisites and credit. Then uh, we, we, similarly, we continue all other categories. There are additional categories for home and neighborhood. For home, you have a location and linkage. Additional two categories. Apart from eight, you have a two more categories for home. Location and linkages, awareness and education. That's for categories for home. On categories for neighborhood, you have a smart location and linkage. Additional categories for neighborhood. Three additional categories. Neighborhood pattern and design, green infrastructure and design. So you will have a one question in this. Maybe they'll tell you one of the categories is not applicable uh, to uh, some other lead new construction. So they may give you this one, right? So that means this, these are uh, five categories, two for additional for home, three for neighborhood only. Right. So now you know uh, what is your project? what rating system it is going to be. So you, you have a proper document uh, to justify whether your project is a lead new construction or core and shell or school or health care. You have a clear uh, justification and documented. Then you think about your uh, whether um, my project is eligible for project uh, for lead certification or not. That you follow as per minimum program requirement. Once you know the minimum program requirement all met, then you go for a project right assuming you are a um, you know, administrative person for lead certification the first thing what you will do you do the lead charit meeting right the lead charit meeting this is nothing but ipd team meeting we said no? you're forming ipd team that ipd team you should meet that's what i was we i first class we shared right? the same thing it's type of workshop where participants combine brainstorming discussion and strategy development to create share vision goal and plan for the next step of a project so that could be uh, who are all should be the uh, the participant owner architect engineer contractor consultant and everything so the outcome of the chariot should include the final draft of lead scorecard. So the, the charity meeting, the outcome, it has to be recorded. No, normally it will discuss at the part of lead scorecard. The lead scorecard is a something Excel sheet for that particular rating system. If I say new construction, so then you go to the lead online. When you print out uh, lead scorecard, it will give you all the credit. Then you have a three columns there. The lead scorecard, you may have a three column. Yes, maybe, no. No, so you can select which one. So there are uh, all the credit points and prerequisites there. Yes, what are things we can meet? You tick it as a yes. Probably we can try that. You made it make it as a maybe. So then if it is unable to possible. So for example, you said about um, regional material. For example, it is not possible. Or rapidly renewable material. It is not possible. So then you can make it no. So same way, you can prepare your you know, initial draft of how many points uh, or uh, what certification level we can focus. So that is a preliminary rating system you can get from this lead scorecard. So that lead scorecard also you can print out and discuss in the chariot meeting. So all the meeting minutes, it should, the chariot meeting minutes, that means the IPD meeting minutes should be documented. Then it has to be filed and it has to be uploaded. You will get a point again. So this is a lead scorecard. It is a list of all credit for a specific rating system and help the team to track which one are ideal for the project to attempt. The typical scorecard has a yes, maybe no column. Once it is completed, preliminary rating or targeted lead certification is known. Where you can download, you can download this Excel sheet, www.uagbc.org. In that, you go to lead scorecard, select your rating system, you print out that Excel sheet. Right. So for any question about your uh, rating system, uh, justifying your rating system on minimum program requirement and the categories, then we just now we saw about our uh, scorecard, a chariot meeting and scorecard. Any any question? Um. Yeah. Can you just explain again what is FTE? FTE is a full time equivalent. Right. For uh, uh, if it is office building, we generally we say eight hour per day for one person. It's an eight hour per day. Right. That means it's a one FTE. If you are working 10 people, that means uh, you may have a eight FTE. 
Uh, sorry, 10 people mean 10 FTE. 8 hour per day, it, which is 1 person, 8 hour per day, that means it become 1 FTE. If it is a 10 people, that means it's 80 hour per day, that become it is a uh, 10 into 80. Yeah, then it become a 10 FTEs. So that's called a full time equivalent. For resident, there is no FTE because the resident will be 24 hours will be there in that uh, uh, building. So then there is no FTE. FTE will be applicable to only those schools, um, no office building and everything. Wherever you have a, even healthcare also, I don't, you can use it FTE to calculate, but uh, because uh, healthcare, you may have 24 by seven, there will be people. So you can't count it as a FTE there. Healthcare means I'm only talking about the hospitals. Other than the store, warehouse, and all, yeah, you can take it as a eight FTE. Uh, one FTE means eight hour per day. Any more question? We can download lead scorecard from uh, which site? www.uigbc.org. Okay. So in that Excel sheet, you have a, if you have to select the uh, lead scorecard, then it will show you what are the rating system. So whether it is a, you have to select your project, whether it is a new construction or home or a retail or healthcare. If you select that one, then it will give you, give you the all categories and their respective credit in one Excel sheet with a column. Now you can see, yes, maybe no column. So you can under each category, you can, each credit you can, Tick it, whether it is possible, yes. If it is not possible, you tick no. So that way, you can roughly can estimate how many points you can uh, know, you can get it. Or maybe you can try, we need to do better, then you can add up some other extra effort. So maybe we can try this kind of uh, credit points to get it. So that way, you can set a target for the team. Good. Okay. Any more questions? Right. So now I have a, a team already formed and then we know what is my project. We know what uh, lead rating system is applicable, what guide we are going to use, or whether the minimum program requirement we tested, then what are the categories we have tested, the load, uh, the chart meeting done, then we know the estimated point, then the scorecard we have printed out already. Then we go for a project registration under the UAGBC website. Actually, it's not UAGBC website. It is a GBCA.org, right? Green Building Certification Institute, where you, all the project get certified and also the uh, individual that uh, lead AP exam, no? the credential also you have to register under GBCA. So all the project registration should be registered at GBCA.org. Uh, These are the registration fees. But you can, uh, in the registration fees, the latest all, you can check it in the website, what is the registration fee. But the registration fee, the uh, uh, certification fee, that all will not be in your question. The amount-wise, they won't ask you the question. Okay. So these are the registration fees. Once you register the fee, then you'll get uh, access to the Oh, that particular you have to enter once you register means you have to enter your uh, company name your address you know everything you have to enter then you have to assign a uh, people also so that is called you create id then you register that then who is going to be the administrator for that particular project so once you pay the fees it will ask you to enter the administrator at the time of project registration the team will need to identify the lead project administrator who has the responsibility of setting up the project team member Enter the team member assignment for credit. That means each credit, who is the responsible? You can assign a people. For example, I would say uh, energy and atmosphere, you can assign electrical engineer. If it is uh, in uh, material, right, uh, material resource, you can assign some good uh, procurement officer or procurement engineer, so you can assign. So the same way you can assign the team for each particular credit wise also. You can, not the category, credit wise also you can assign it. Then the submitting the application for review. So he is the one going to submit the application. So project, this is the project administrator responsibility. The project administrator does not have to be a lead. So here uh, the um, UAGBC not setting as a 
um, uh, condition, the lead AP should be the uh, project administrator. So they are telling it is not necessary. But if you, uh, if the company was set up, uh, no, they when they put lead AP as administrator, th that you can't avoid it because normally the practically the company prefer the lead AP to be the project administrator because they know the system, they know the requirement, so they know the document how it has to be prepared everything. So practically the company prefers the senior certified lead AP person uh, as a project administrator because they are the one uh, handling all the lead online tool. They submit all the documents. They assign the team member. They are the one you know, communicate with the lead technical group. So in that case, project administrator should be certified lead AP. Right? This is practically happened, but UAGBC not setting as a criteria. All the team members are responsible for the documentation of that particular credit they have been assigned. So if the project administrator is assigned for that particular uh, credit, uh, team member is assigned, then he or she is responsible for all the documentation of that particular credit, and then they can submit their own uh, all the. But that has to be reviewed by the administrator before submit. Then it will be submitted. So project team and administrator should collect the information need for submittals. All the lead online tool, you can use it for the credit template and submittals. Each rating system has its own set of form. That is called the lead submitter. It has to be in a uh, downloaded in a PDF form. It should be completed and uploaded in a lead online. Right, so uh, the particular uh, credit uh, necessary, uh, the information that's called a credit submitter. There is a form there. You have to fill up that uh, form, what credit it is, what you have done, and everything. Attach it with the respective document, uh, then you submit it. That's called lead submittal form. That also you can download uh, the, from your website, and it has to be fill it up. Lead online website, then you have to fill it up, then upload it in the link. What is lead online? Once you register your project, the registration fees is done, then you will give access lead online tool. It's a tool to communicate between your customer and that um, your GBC team. So in the lead online, you can select what rating system and everything, your project, uh, your company uh, details and everything, you can enter it. That's called lead online tool. Now, once you have uh, uh, submitted all your uh, uh, rating system and your uh, submittals, go for a certification fees. So certification fees is not after paying about certification fees, then only the submittal review can be done because certification fees means you'll have a review, right? They will review, design review, construction review, or you have a combined review. So all these things with the, even though you submit all the, your document, it won't be reviewed until you pay, pay the fees. But the payment of the fees is the, whether it is how many percentage partially and all, that may vary that you can discuss with them directly. Then they will tell you, oh, you know, whether they, when they are going to do the design review or construction review or both review and everything. See, this is a uh, registration fees for a uh, uh, project but the registration fees, sorry, uh, certification fees, certification fees, the only thing you don't need to remember the uh, cost wise, remember the certification fees vary with the area, square feet, right? If it is 50,000 to 500,000, uh, then more than 500,000 and less than 500,000 square feet. So there is a different charge by area of that uh, uh, the building or the, the project. And then you have appeal here, $500 for each uh, design review or consensual review appeal. Appeal means, let's say if they're rejected, right? The particular thing you, credit, you have submitted everything. If they're rejected, you appeal it again, right? Then you have to pay the fees. That's the extra additional charge. That's called 500 for appeal. So you don't need to remember the, uh, uh, all the uh, certification fees. Remember the certification fees may vary with the area. 50,000, 50,000 to 500,000, above 500,000 square feet. There's a three different category certification fees. And then each appeal, you have to pay 500. So here, multiple certification is possible. Recertification fees is also there, right? The last one is called CIR, credit interpretation requests or ruling. That I will talk about. It's a 220 US dollar. What is CIR? We will see that later. So this is a lead online tool. Once you are uh, registered, you get a lead online tool. Then you can start uh, submitting your uh, uh, submittals or form. 
for the credit submittals, then you pay the certification, whether you want only the design review or whether you want to do the construction review also accordingly pay the fees, then they start out to review. Then they will say, yes, it is accepted. No, it is not accepted. That type of reply, response will be there. The lead online, what is the lead online? After project registration, the administrative will have access to the lead online. The administrative will give access to other team member by assigning them to various credit. So the, he will assign other team member to the various credit points. Lead online is a respiratory for all project information. These tools allows the team member, the lead the online tool, you can use it to submit all your document, upload your credit template or submittals right and view and submit cir cir means credit interpretation request we will talk about what is cir okay each cir also you can fill it up and you can submit through uh, lead online and then contact customer service view and respond uh, to the reviewer comment so what is a reviewer what is his opinion or comment that also you can review this is the purpose of having a lead online tool so lead online is a communication tool to upload the document and then uh, uh, get it approved and get it uh, um, the points have been awarded in that lead online. If any doubt like CAR, you can uh, you can fin uh, fill it up and you can submit it to upload it to the lead online tool. So that's a tool to between your UIGBC team, technical team and yourself. So template used for documenting and compliance with the credit through lead online. That's called submitters. It's a PDF file, can be downloaded from lead online. So it should be signed by declarant. Each, each member can sign the credit template. Each team member has access to that credit template, completes and provide documentations. Uh, project administrator, he will review and submit only. So once you submitted your uh, um, credit template for each credit, respective credit, the status will be anticipated, clarified, achieved, denied. Anticipated means they have uh, um, uh, anticipated, uh, most likely it will be awarded. We agree whatever you are doing it. So, but the now the point is not uh, awarded, they keep it in a reserve, right? Maybe they want to check it later. For example, um, pollution control, sorry, yeah, Controlling the pollution during your execution of projects, uh, construction. And construction is going on, how you control the pollution. So there is a procedure is there to document it. So they, that kind of credit and all, they will hold it. They will wait until it is complete. They anticipate your procedure on your document, everything, but they don't award it now. They keep it in the reserve. That's called anticipate. Clarify means they need some more information. So that you have to submit additional information of what they are asking for. Achieved means they were awarding about the particular points. How many points? You say 20 percentage water, 20, 30 percentage water saving. You have claimed for two points. You submit all your calculations. Then they verify it. They will award. For example, I'm telling you. Denied means they reject. So each denied one, you can appeal it again. So each appeal, you have to go for a $500 payment. That's a lead online. You will get the status. Some in between, somebody asked some question, is it? I hear some voice, no? Right. So now, any questions so far? We have seen about these until uh, certification, lead uh, registration, this is, uh, uh, so this is a registration fees then project administrator, then the responsibility of project administrator, then the lead online tool. Then you go to submit, credit submit in a PDF file or credit template in a PDF file. Okay, certification fees they're talking about here. The project that achieved platinum certificate will receive a rebate on all certification fees. But however, the registration fees, appeal fees, or any additional fees will not be refunded. If your project is certified as a platinum, then the certification fees will rebate. They will maybe some portion of your certification fees will be returned to you, excluding your appeal or additional fees, registration fees. It's a lead online tool. So these are all possible questions. Okay, the lead online or you know where it will be. It's a www.gbca.org. So it's a lead online tool. Right? Then um, 
what are the thing you can do it one of the thing you are not uh, you, you you can't get it from lead online that kind of questions then uh, certification fees vary with the area then they said about the responsibility of a lead project administrator so this all possible question okay, what is ci credit interpretation request so if let's say some credit you have a some doubt if you are following this method then if you achieve whether it is acceptable by uh, by ugbc or not or you have some doubt to or clarify that particular credit that's called cir you can write cir credit interpretation request but each cir you have to fill up a form right with uh, you have to pay the fees cir can be submitted any time after a project is registered the people, the project team only can uh, go for a um, CIR, whether it is needed or not. The GBCA will not uh, decide. Then you have to decide any interpretation or uh, any explanation or you need. You have to raise a CIR. There is a CIR form. Uh, you know, if, uh, by each category, there is a button will be there in the lead online tool. Then if you click that CIR, it will open up the temp, some kind of form. There you can see what credit it is. Then you have to type your question what clarification you want that you can type you have to type only there is no any attachment we will see that there's no attachment and all you can give it cr can only submitted by project team associated with the registered project entire cr process go through uh, it's done through lead online okay each cr you have to pay 220 us dollar right? for each cr you should address one subject only for example if it is a uh, um indoor water saving okay? so there is a pre-request there is a credit also if you have a some doubt related to this specific requirement whether it is a, a pre-request or credit so you have you are writing some strategy whether it will meet or not so it can be covered pre-request also credit also so you no need to write a credit name since already is there in that form when you click that button then it will show you in that particular credit so you no need to write a, again uh, some point but or that uh, you cannot use two different uh, specific uh, subject into one credit, one uh, CIR. So each subject or each credit you will have a, you have to use one CIR. If it is a similar problem, you can use it one CIR. If it is a different, different problem, you have to use a two CIR. Each CIR, then you have to pay five, uh, 220 US dollar, which should not be formatted as a letter, the so maximum 600 words. There is no confidential in information you should not include. Credit name is not required because it's already there. You can know any attachment. Should not be any attachment, no confidential information. Maximum 600 words. You have to pay 220 US dollar. No confidential information also. No need to put a credit name. So within, once it's submitted, within two to five weeks, you'll get a response from that team your GBC technical team. Who or can view your say yeah, your GBC company member, lead registered project team members, and then any workshop attendees have access to view the CR. CR is nothing but different projects, different people have raised some queries. They may have attached with a no explanation. So you, once you register your project, you can view the uh, other people, like, you know, FAQ in some website, they put a frequently asked question. So from when you read that FAQ, you will understand any issues or problem if you face how to solve it. So the same way like CIR. So you, once your project is registered, you can view the other project registered CIR also. And what is the response, everything. So that way you can also learn something. So that's all for information on CIR. CIR, very important, you will have one question. 220 US dollars is the payments. Mm, then each CR should address one credit only. You don't need to write a credit name. The maximum 600 word, no confidential information, no attachment, right? So then each, you have to write a separate, separate CIR. Then two to five weeks, you'll get a response. So these are the important things. You will get a one question in CIR. Any question about the CIR? Any question? Meaning, meaning, if you submit uh, uh, whatever it is, small thing, meaning you have to pay two twenty dollar. Yes. So you you can't write any email or anything to uh, 
you know, uh, the lead AP people, you can only write to customer service, right? So those something commercial related or, or you know, that kind of things, they will assist you. If anything technical related things, they will uh, direct to ask you to go through your CAR. You fill up the CAR, then we will submit to that prospective uh, technical team because there is called tag team. We will see that later. They are volunteers. Depends upon the area or maybe that volunteers, maybe some people in only electrical, some people maybe in only in uh, civil and structure, some people maybe the procurement where the uh, materials are available. So different expertise are there. They are working in their own uh, uh, area, but they are doing volunteer work to review all your questions or clarification. So in order to save that time, they are setting up a cost to because to really you know, reasonable clarification that should be addressed right so for that only they have this kind of a system 220 dollar you have to pay so then if you have a small simple simple dot what do you have to do read that car because once your project team member is registered once you become a project administrator you can read other project car like you know in the website you have a faq you know the same way you if you have access to other car read that one you can get some idea uh, related to the topic. If not, you go to your, you know, the technical team. Once you become a USGBC, you'll become a member, right? So you can write and you can see whether you can find answer. From that, you can uh, resolve your uh, questions. I don't think, uh, you know, uh, much complicated there to you know, the system to clear on, unless otherwise we are doing innovation, innovation and design work, right? So innovation and design work, if you are doing, you can write to them also, they will respond to you. The strategy, new strategy and all, you have to you know, write to the respective people only. So that you have to use a uh, lead online too. That means, yeah. yeah. Good. Any more mostly, questions? Mostly USGB uh, member uh, project administration or any uh, anyone? See, the project administrator for uh, uh, each project, uh, that can be assigned by the management team. So it's not necessarily, as per USGBC, it's not a criteria to be a lead AP person should be the project administrator for lead system. Lead system we're talking about, not for the whole project. So for this particular lead online, in order to upload all the document, maintain it, com communication with the USGBC team and all, you the, pro the company or the project team have to assign one person as a project administrator in the lead online tool, right? That person not necessary to be the uh, to be a lead AP as per the requirement uh, from USGBC, but practically a company will assign a lead AP only for that uh, project administrator because lead AP will know the requirement and the, you know the requirement of USGBC. What are the things how to be done? They they will aware about that. So for that practically the company will assign lead AP as a project administrator in a lead online too. <clears throat> okay any more question okay. yeah i just have a quick question um about the re registration fees are we like supposed to know how much is required for each category since uh, registration fees is for member or non-member only nothing to do with the categories so the here if you see the registration fees for member or non-member, okay? This is called certification fees. You now, this is what about here. This table is a certification fees. When you go for, in, when you're talking about the exam perspective, the fees and all, uh, what is the registration fee? What is the certification fee? What is the design review? No, that type of question. The fees, why there is there will not be any question, right? But when you're talking about the uh, question, it, how it will come in the certification fees, whether it is, you know, uh, area wise, uh, when how the certification fees will be decided based on area or company or the location, you know, that kind of option will be there. So remember, by area wise, uh, depends upon the area, the certification fee may vary. The area is only three things less than five, 50,000 square feet, 50,000 to 500 square feet, another category, then ab uh, above 500,000 square feet, then is another category, only that one. So you don't need to remember fees and all. Right, but you can remember appeal means you have to pay 500. Any appeal you have to pay 500. CIR 220. That fees you have. only two fees you remember. The other fees are no need to remember. For exam perspective. Okay, is that clear? 
Yes, it is clear. And also, um, regarding the status, anticipated is considered like the highest grade, right? Like it means it passed, right? You mean? Because I am I'm confused uh, between uh, anticipated the, the and submittals. That is a uh, here. You mean? Yeah. It's anticipated, clarify, achieve. See, yeah. anticipated means they uh they anticipate your uh, the procedure or your result or whatever you have submitted they anticipated that means the points are reserved but they don't award you now that's the meaning it will take time so maybe they want to check some more thing whether are you maintaining the whole uh, you know, life of the project so that they want to see then they will award most likely they are satisfying whatever you submitting for that particular credit so they satisfy with that but they reserve the point but they don't award now. That's a meaning. If it is uh, okay, then they will straight away achieved point. Okay. So anticipated means whatever the document, photographs, calculation is submitted, it is satisfied their requirement, but they keep your point reserved. They want to see some more, uh, uh, whether it is being continued the whole, uh, whole life of the project or how it is. So then uh, later stage, they'll verify some more document, then they will award that point. Is it clear? Yeah, it is clear. Very good. Any more question? Okay, now we talk about the lead home. Why there is a lead home? Whatever the process just now we said, no, about the project administrator, the team member, lead online tool and everything. So, but these are for all other, other projects, you can do it. But if it is a lead home uh, and a lead neighborhood, right, in these two, there is a separate procedure. Process is separate. Certification process is separate. Once you registered your project as a home, then what they will do, uh, certification fees and all you, uh, uh, you've done, your registration fees, then the certification fees you paid, then the UAGBC will assign a home provider, lead for home provider. The certification process for home is different than other rating system. Builders or project manager must work with the lead for home provider. They will assign you. If you can do it, you can suggest to, suggest to them. But generally, they will assign your lead home provider for your project. So he will work with you. He or she will work with you to market the lead to the builders, provide a home rating support services to the builders, training, coordinating, and also overseeing your qualified inspectors. Because you, if your home is there, they believe the individual person. So not necessarily you can hire a lead AP or not. So they you can they will assign a home provider. They will ensure all the training, coordinating, integrating, technical rigidity, everything. They will ensure. The, but this included in that certification fees. So that's a different. The certification process for home is different than other rating system. Builders or project manager must work with the lead for home provider who will rate the lead home project. So the lead for home provider. Also help with marketing, lead to the builders, other our marketing. They will provide green home rating support services, training, coordinating, and overseeing all qualified inspectors. This is a lead uh, home process requirement. And then how about other project and all? Based on your uh, calculation, procedure, checklist, photographs, Based on that, when you upload it, based on that document only, it will be awarded. So that's why they are completely the technical rigority wise, they are completely uh, integrity wise, they re rely on the certified lead AP. So the lead AP, if you are working in any project, even though maybe in a, some project, you may have a three or four lead AP will be there, right? So one lead AP, they may, if, if they assign as a project administrator, right? Then not only that. So normally for lead AP, you will have a one additional point. You will have here for lead AP in your team. If you have one lead AP, you'll have a one additional point. Right? Let, let's say if you have a three lead APs, no problem. They will only give you one point only. Right. So this lead AP, that means you have to submit the lead AP certificate of one person with experience and everything to them in order to gain this point. Right. So this person is responsible for uh, the technical things in your project because the why I'm talking about here, 
other project they are all based on your um, nobody will come and inspect or checking so they completely rely on that certified vda papers the professionalism so whatever you are submitting is a document or or procedure everything it is a, a real true one it is being implemented there so that uh, as a certified lead ap you have to ensure but except the process, uh, lead home they will assign you the home provider the next is the lead neighborhood the lead neighborhood, the certification process will have a three stages. Review prior to completion. Then they go for a certification based on the approved plan. Based on the approved plan, they'll issue a certificate. Then after completion, they review, then give you the final certification. So that means the certification will give before completion, based on the plan, it will be given. Then once it is completed, again, they review, then they issue a certificate. Right. So but why they have to do it? Because market out you know because if it is a, a platinum certified you know you can see many advertisement it's a platinum but the construction still not started but they say it's a platinum certified project because how it is based on the plan they issue a certificate once the construction or execution the project is completed again you have to submit all the document then they review it then they will give you the uh, another certificate this is a three stage process for neighborhood The next one talking about the lead volume program. Volume program or it is called a portfolio. That means for some, one company, you can keep, keep it as a one volume program. So because the company may have a, uh, one project is going on new construction, another project may be home, another project may be the maintenance. So there are multiple projects they are handling at the same time. So maybe they can put it everything under one umbrella as a volume program. So they can uh, you know, make it like you know one person can coordinate, like a lead AP also can coordinate three projects. 